Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Hello, little doodles. So by the time you're watching this video, I think it'll be closer to the holidays. So I hope you guys are having a lovely holiday season. Um, maybe this video will give you something to watch. <laughs> you guys know the drill by now. I'm doing my January 2022 bullet journal setup. If you are new to my channel, welcome. But also we just posted my beginning of the year 2022 bullet journal setup video recently so if you haven't seen that i'll link it down below that video has the beginning of the year spreads and all of that this video will have all of my january specific spreads so just wanted to clarify that i also posted my 2021 bullet journal flip through so there's a lot to watch for inspo and all of that i'll just link everything down below as usual. I won't make this intro too long, so if you're planning with me, then grab your notebook and your pens. If you're just chilling, maybe grab a cup of hot chocolate, tea by the fireplace. I don't know if people have fireplaces anymore, but in my idealized world, some of you guys do, and I feel like that's a very ideal cozy situation, but let's just get right into it. So for my January 2022 bullet journal setup, I decided to recreate one of my very first January bullet journal setups, which is this fireworks theme from 2018. I will link this video above if you haven't seen it yet. But I did mention briefly in my uh, flip through in my bullet journal setup that I was thinking about maybe recreating some of my older bullet journal themes and setups since it has been uh, five years of me doing these setups and my style has changed so much since the very beginning. I thought it would be fun to revamp this older theme of mine from four years ago and see what I create in my current style of bullet journaling now, four years later. Um, technically, that January 2018 bullet journal setup is my first January plan with me because in 2017, which was my first year of bullet journaling, I started in January, so um, I didn't have a plan with me video up yet. But anyway, um, for this year's 2022 version of this setup, I decided to create a cover page with black paper, which is something that I've never done before, and I thought it would be very fitting for this theme because, you know, you want the night sky, black background, and I that's what I did. So I glued in a black piece of paper, and on top of this black paper, I am using the Sakura Jelly Roll white gel pen to write out January, and then I'm also using some Archer and Olive acrylographs to create my fireworks. And these are, I just used three different colors. I have an orange color, a yellow, and then a pale blue. And if you have seen the 2018 version of this fireworks theme for me, then you'll probably notice that I'm drawing the fireworks a little bit different from how I did it in 2018. Um, I actually do have a doodle tutorial that I created from that year, which I will show here. But I think the main difference is that this year I'm drawing them a bit more geometric and abstract instead of the more, I guess, realistic kind of droopy curved lines that I drew the fireworks previously. This one is definitely more like geometric. I'm starting out with a circle starburst shape and then kind of sprouting out from there and adding circles, teardrop shapes all around it. And drawing them really reminded me of drawing snowflakes because I'm making sure that they are pretty symmetrical all throughout. And I feel like it just gives it a more fun, funky, almost modern look to the design. So I'm really just playing around with those four colors, the white, blue, orange, and yellow, and switching between them. Honestly, for this cover page, I really just experimented a lot with each different firework that I was drawing. Normally, I would have kind of like a formula of a doodle for the theme that I was doing for that particular month, but in this case, I just really wanted to experiment with different types of firework designs. Um, and I think because it is a more abstract design, you can totally have fun with it and it kind of ends up looking like fireworks no matter what you create um even though they are more abstract i think with the whole theme in mind and seeing them all together it really does look celebratory and like fireworks and i just really love how this turned out especially on the black background i do think it really really pops um if you don't have like paint markers or gel pens or black paper i still think this theme would look really cute just on the white paper and maybe using some fun bright colors or metallic col colors even 
and it's just a really customizable simple theme i think there's going to be a lot of different versions that i'm excited to see when you guys recreate it so definitely don't be afraid to put your own spin on it i did just want to give a quick little tip for drawing these fireworks if any of you guys are recreating them um, even though they are simple to draw like as you can see when i add one shape to the starburst i'm just kind of adding it to the opposite end of the starburst and going all around making sure that it's symmetric but a note is to sketch out the main circles ahead of time just to give you a base of where to place those little sprouts within the circle shape and that'll help so that you're not just freehanding it and that they don't end up looking like ovals once you go all around. Um, for some of them, I even did an outer circle and an inner circle so that I knew where the center was and that just helps when you're adding the sprouts. Also, the starburst sprouts, I guess that's what I'm calling them, <laughs> um, but the sprouts, I feel like a lot of people maybe initially would think to draw them just in order in clockwise direction or counterclockwise direction, but I feel like that really makes things look a little bit wonky because it's hard to eyeball it. So as you can see here, what I do is when I draw a sprout from the starburst, I just go directly across and then I keep going around. So if I draw one on the left side, I'll draw one on the right side. And that just helps to make sure that your firework is even all the way around and it is that kind of perfect circle shape. All right, so I'm pretty much finished on this cover page here. I think it looks really cute. Um, and in the end, it almost ended up looking like I drew this on a chalkboard, which I kind of like the vibes of. Uh, the only other thing that I did want to note is that if you do mess up on the black paper, you can just scribble over it with some black markers. So don't be afraid. Um, I definitely messed up a couple times as you saw, and I just covered it with black fine liner and then use my paint markers over top of it so that's a little hack and then on the side here i'm just cutting off the edge because you'll see later i did tabs throughout this monthly setup so you'll see how i do that in a bit but i think the cover page turned out really cute and it's very i feel like an updated version of the 2018 cover page now on the left side i did do a quote page and i didn't do the same quote as the 2018 setup this month or this year's i said from a single spark may burst a mighty flame which i thought was a good note to start off on and i did that same font that i did my cover page in it's kind of like a I don't, I don't know if this is bubble letters but it is a bit more of a quirkier style of lettering I don't know exactly why I decided on this style of lettering, but I thought it would just go really well with the geometric firework design that we had going on on the right side. Once I finished up with this lettering, which by the way, um, I'm using my Sakura Pigma Micron fine liners, of course, to create that. And of course, as usual, all the supplies that I'm using for this setup will be linked in the description box down below. But to finish off this quote page, I just added a couple of the fireworks around the quote, but just on the white paper, not on the black paper. And I think this just shows you that the firework design does look good on white paper. I think this looks really cute. So if you didn't have black paper or paint markers, don't worry, just use regular markers on the white paper. Maybe choose brighter colors so that they stand out more and you're good to go. Hello, it's me. Of course, before I show you guys the rest of my January spreads, I wanted to talk quickly about today's lovely sponsor, Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the perfect all-in-one platform to help you build your online presence and run your business, build a website. I know it's the new year. Maybe some of you guys have New Year's resolutions to start that side hustle, create that online portfolio, and Squarespace is definitely there to make that happen for you. Of course, my personal website, amandareachley.com was built on Squarespace and it is super, super easy. If you don't have any experience with web design, they have tons of beautiful designer templates for you to use and customize. And especially if you are someone who is looking to showcase your work, maybe for a portfolio or something, they have so many image gallery options for you. Photos are such a big part of a website and that's why it's really important that they are displayed properly. With Squarespace, they have automatic image scaling, which just makes sure that your photos always look right no matter where they are on your website. Even if you drag and drop the image block somewhere else on your 
website, they will automatically fix that up for you. And if you need to adjust the crop, it's as simple as double clicking it. Other than that, Squarespace makes it simple for you to connect to your social media accounts so you can display images from your Instagram, um, other posts as well. They have so many different portfolio gallery layouts, some that you can customize. You can customize the animation even and just make sure that your work and yourself is being displayed as best as possible. So for the new year, start that website, start that side hustle. And if you guys want to try out Squarespace for yourself, you can head to squarespace.com slash Lee for a free trial and for 10% off your first purchase of a domain or a website. Uh, the link will also be down below in the description box. Thank you again to Squarespace and back to the video. Moving on to my monthly calendar setup, as you can see, I broke out my handy dandy guillotine paper cutter, which has quickly become one of my favorite completely unnecessary stationary purchases. I mean, I totally could use scissors for this, but why would I do that when using a paper cutter is just so satisfying and fun and slightly dangerous? I love to live on the edge a little bit. <laughs> Please, please take that as a word of caution. Don't play around with paper cutters, children, if you're listening. It's very dangerous, especially guillotine ones. Anyway, as you can see, I did cut out my black paper into these small squares and I laid them out into my calendar. I thought using the black paper for the calendar boxes would go really well with the black paper theme that we have going on without actually just pasting full sheets of black paper on every single page because one, that would make my bullet journal extremely thick and also, I just didn't want my whole setup this month to be fully black paper. Um, so another thing that I did was I wrote out the titles and headers, like in this case, January for the calendar, on the black piece of paper and then I cut around it to still create that white on black kind of lettering look without, again, doing the full sheet of black. And I feel like it just makes the lettering pop a little bit more. And also it makes it really easy because if you mess up the lettering, you can just redo it and cut it out again. Um, so on those black squares, I used my paint markers to create the circles in the top left and numbered out the calendar. And then from there, all I did was just add my various firework doodles all around the calendar. So I thought this looked really cute, pretty simple to create. Honestly, cutting out those black squares with the paper cutter made it really quick and easy to do, probably faster than if I were to just draw out all of these squares. So it was pretty convenient. Um, okay, so in a bit, you'll see me create the tabs for this page, which I wanted to briefly explain. So in the cover page, I mentioned that I cut off the edge so that you could see the tabs and that's what I'm creating on this page. I wanted to experiment this month with creating tabs on every single one of the monthly spreads. So that includes the calendar, the trackers, everything else. Um, and that way you can kind of see the tabs from wherever you are and reference them and flip to them. I cut off the right edge of the page. Oh, for actually first, as you can see, I added the little black paper tab on the top so that I can mark out where I wanted each tab to be and how much of the side to cut off. And then I just cut off the right side. So it's pretty easy. And now when you flip back to the cover page, you can see the tab. For some reason, I forgot to do it while I was filming this video, but later on, I will go back and label the tabs. I really like how the tabs look and I had a lot of fun with it. I think also I was coming off of filming the 2022 bullet journal setup where I did use a lot of black paper and tabs, especially with the Dutch store future log and stuff like that. So I think I was still in that kind of mode, but it's nice because it does look very cohesive with the beginning of the year bullet journal spreads that I did. So it ended up working out, but <laughs> yes, I think I'm currently in a black paper and tab phase. Anyway, currently you're seeing me create my tracker spreads. So I'm writing out habit tracker and mood tracker on the black paper and then cutting it out for the headers. Um, again, with that white Sakura jelly roll pen and just in that quirky bubble letter font.
Once I finished creating those headers for the trackers, I quickly realized that I wanted to create something a little bit different for each half of the tracker. So on the right side for the mood tracker, I just glued in a full sheet of black paper and that made it really easy because I could still use the header just reattaching it on top. So for the habit tracker, I'm doing my usual mini calendars, except I just drew out the shape of the January calendar just to save time so that I didn't need to write out all the numbers or draw out all the boxes. And for the habits that I'm tracking this month, I am tracking uh, working out, stretching, which is a really big one for me. I really need to stretch because my muscles have been very tense from sitting and lying around during the holidays. Uh, vitamins as usual, flossing, all of that. I would love to hear from you guys what your goals are for the new year, your new year's resolutions. Oh, that's what I forgot to talk about in my intro. Our goal setting. Sorry about that, guys. I totally forgot about our goal segment, so I'm asking you guys now, what are your goals for the new year? Um, what did you achieve? If you achieved any of your goals from 2021, and what are you looking to achieve in 2022? Leave them in the comments, and we can all encourage each other for the new year. I can't believe I totally forgot about our goal setting segment, especially at the beginning of the year where goal setting is like the biggest thing. Um, but good thing I remembered during this voiceover because I do love reading about your goals. I feel like it makes me get to know you guys, the little doodles, a little bit better. So please don't be shy. Feel free to leave your resolutions and goals down below and that way we can also check back in a year's time and see if we have actually achieved them. Let's keep each other accountable. So in my January 2018 mood tracker, I did this really cool mood tracker that was in a circle shape and I would have the different starburst lines sprouting out from that center and the different lengths of lines indicated different moods. So it ended up looking like a firework once it was complete. And I thought that was so cool. And I feel like there's not really that many opportunities for me to do a mood tracker like this. Obviously it works perfectly for this theme. So I wanted to recreate it in my 2022 version. So I started out on the black paper, just sketching out a circle and all of the little circles around it so that there was enough numbers, 31 days. Um, there ended up, I ended up drawing too many, so there's an extra there, which I just did as a demo to show you guys. Here's that demo. As you can see, I'm just drawing a line and adding circles at the end to make it look like the end of a firework sprouting out, I guess. Um, and as I go along, I'll just be switching the colors to make it look more colorful. So I can't wait to see how this turns out in the end. I feel like it is very, very fun. And I think it honestly might end up looking more like a mandala versus a firework, but I also think that's cool. Goes along with the geometric abstract vibes anyways. The next spreads that I'm making are my playlist spread and my Shop Amanda H. Lee brain dump page. As you just saw, I did add the tab on the right side as I've been doing for all of the previous spreads. And as I'm going through each page, you can see the tabs getting longer and that's just so you get that layered tab effect um, when you flip through it. Anyway, for the headers of each of these spreads, I kept it pretty simple, just did it with that quirky bubble letter type of lettering style. And then I just used my markers to create a simple border around it in the same colors as the fireworks. It was looking a little empty at the top, so I just added a couple of the firework doodles. These are really quick to doodle, by the way, so highly recommend for quick and easy doodles. And as I was drawing them, I was like, what does this remind me of drawing? And I realized as I was doing them that it reminded me of drawing snowflakes as a child because you have to do that symmetrical kind of look to them and also I just had a lot of fun experimenting with the different styles of sprouts like whether I added larger circles on the ends whether they were teardrop shapes more triangle shapes at the end so it really did remind me of snowflakes I think if I had used all blue shades, like icy blue shades, it would have looked more like a snowflake theme, which is kind of cool as well. So uh, depending on the colors, I think the vibe of the doodles could look completely different. So back to the playlist spread, as you saw, I just cut out some rectangles of the black paper and that's where I wrote out the playlist of the month. I actually just wrote out albums that I've been loving, not specifically songs because I've recently discovered a lot of great artists and albums 
albums. So if you are looking for some new tunes to jam out to, I will link my Spotify playlist down below. The shop Man Rachel Brain Dump page is just completely empty, so I just kept it blank and simple so that I have more space to brainstorm all of my evil concoctions for the year. <laughs> there are a lot of things coming this year, I will say that. Anyway, moving on. Finally, we have made it to the first weekly spread of January. And for this weekly spread, I took inspiration from a old January 2018 weekly spread. This was my favorite weekly spread from that setup. I think it looked really cute and elegant. It just had the numbers inside of the fireworks and it was actually a horizontal spread, which uh, you guys know I don't normally do, but for the first week of January, since it is a bit less busy for me, I figured since I don't need as much planning space, I could go ahead and recreate that setup. So I'm just writing out the days of the week on the black paper, cutting it out. I did write it out a little bit smaller so that it gives me more space to doodle and plan. And once I cut those all out, I just used my glue tape roller to attach those to the page. And it was as simple as dividing out the lines for the days of the week. I think the grid spacing for this I believe it was 12 dot spaces, don't hold me to that. I just referred to my uh, grid spacing cheat sheet at the beginning of my bullet journal, so sorry if that's incorrect. And then around the number of the date, I just added all of my firework designs all around it. So it was really simple, quick, easy, cute. And I just thought it was a nice callback to that January 2018 weekly spread. I do think it was one of the more popular weekly spreads that I created during that year because I've seen so many people recreate that specific weekly spread, which is just really cool and interesting to see over the years what people still recreate to this day. So I do want to thank you guys for that, sticking through it all these years and um, just being interested in what I create every month. Anyway, that is it for my setup. Here is the final flip through of my January 2022 firework themed bullet journal setup. We referenced 2018 Amanda. It was a little bit meta. It was like I was recreating my own bullet journal, but it was kind of fun. I do like the updated modern abstract funky vibes and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well and got some inspiration. All right, my friends, so as we wrap up this video, here are some recreations from last month. Of course, if you do recreate any of my spreads, be sure to tag me on social media at Amanda Ridgely. That's my username everywhere. And if you want to watch me create weekly spreads in real time, come join us on Twitch every weekend for live streams. It's a fun time. I stream every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern time, 11 a.m. Pacific time. And I think that's it. So happy new year, guys. I have high hopes for 2022 and I'm just sending you guys all the good luck for the new year. So stay safe, stay warm, and keep doodling. Bye everyone!